Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of Ryan Penge and welcome to Precipice, which is a turn-based strategy game set during the Cold War. So because of that it's all about spying and espionage and subterfuge and all that kind of sneaky stuff. It's all very very good. So we're going to take control of one of the two major Cold War powers. We can either be the USA or the USSR and we want to influence the other countries around the world. We want to get ourselves into a sort of a favourable position with lots of other countries around the world in order to overthrow diplomatically our opponent to make sure that they can't actually you know be very good be very powerful and you know, have much global influence and that way we win the cold war so of course with it being a sort of cold war game there is going to be a lot of spying going on and there's also some conflict although the two major powers the usa and the ussr are not allowed to actually fight each other because they've both got the nuclear weapons and if they were to fight each other that would escalate into a great big nuclear war so they're not actually allowed but as the game progresses, things can happen that cause tensions between the two powers and they can escalate. So the tensions can escalate and somebody has to back down during those. Whether it's you or your opponent, somebody has to back down. Because if you don't back down, you both launch nuclear missiles at each other and you obliterate the world. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. And you both lose the game and you plunge the world into, essentially you create fallout. You just start Fallout, that's what happens. So I think this looks very interesting. It looks really interesting. And I think we're going to have a little go at this. Oh, also, there's no human beings. Every single person on this planet is represented by an animal of some description. So that's fun. Okay, and we've got to select our map. So we're going to go for the classic map. So Americans have more allies, but the Soviets have started work on advanced rocketry. So there's already advantages and disadvantages for who you choose. The Americans have got way more allies on the map, but the Soviets have got themselves a little bit of a foothold on the advanced rocketry there. Now, I have done the tutorial. I've done the tutorial a couple of times just to kind of get used to how the game works. I've not actually finished a game properly. I have had a few little sort of efforts where I've just been mucking around and I have nuked the world a couple of times so that's fun but hopefully we won't nuke the planet this time I think we'll play on a classic map let's start now we get to choose who we want to play as and look at this you either get to play as the United States of America represented of course by an eagle the eagle of democracy or you can play as the Ursine Soviet Socialist Republics represented by the bear of communism I think let's go down the United States of America let's go blue because you know it's the USA. Democracy is lovely. And also, blue is geek cover colours. So let's pick you. Also, I mean, the bear, I'm not saying the bear doesn't look dapper. The bear looks lovely. You know, he's got a nice suit and a tie on. But but the eagle just seems to suit that more. It, it just seems to uh, rock the suit look far better. So yes, we shall go for you, Mr. Eagle Man. Okay, so before we start, we get to pick three perks for our side. Now, we get a general sort of pool of perks that are all more or less the same sort of thing. So the detection of clandestine activities in a country is improved by 30%. And that's all we've got. All the good perks are locked away. They're all down here, which we unfortunately cannot get our hands on because we need to complete the game lots of times in order to unlock these. So what we've got is the US detection of clandestine activities in Turkey, South Korea and India are going Going to be improved by 30%. So if the USSR try and do sinister naughty things over in Turkey, South Korea or India, we will have a 30% chance of finding out about that and then we can go and do something about it. So okay, that will do. This is not a war game. Both you and your rival possess the necessary firepower to annihilate each other with a push of a button. The path to victory require diplomacy, subterfuge, misdirection and a lot of bravery. And also some quick reading because my goodness that went away quick. So here we go. This is what the world looks like, the world of precipice. So we've got ourselves the blue territories and the Russians, the USSR, have got themselves the red territories. Now there's two levels, there's two sort of shades of colour. The blue ones, the dark blue ones and the dark red are fiercely loyal. So they're really, really loyal to the side that they're representing. The lighter ones are still loyal. They're okay, but they're a little bit easier to sway, I believe. And the uh, darker blue ones, you can station troops there. They, they trust you so much you can put your United States troops over in those countries. The light blue ones, you cannot. So if we look over here in Canada, we can station troops in Canada because the Canadians and us have got a good old bond. However, we've gone out to Mexico. Mexico are on our side. They are light blue, but they do not let us station troops there until we get them diplomatically on our side. So they're okay with us. They like us, but not enough so we can just chuck a load of our military there. Now, how do we win? There is a little thing down here for victory points. What we want to do is we're building up 
from left to right. We've got ourselves five victory points right now. We want to get all the way over here to this little sort of pin marker thing. Is that a little nuclear explosion? Maybe it's a tiny nuclear explosion marker. So I think that's 18 victory points. We want to get to those victory points. The Russians are coming this way. They want to get over to this marker just here. And you get victory points by controlling blocks of country. So just here, you can see that we've got NATO. NATO, we are putting on a united front with. So because all of the countries in the NATO block of countries, which is Canada and then sort of a, a big chunks of Europe, not all of Europe, but big chunks of Europe that lit up on the screen there, because they're all blue, whether it's dark blue or light blue, that means we've got a united front across NATO. It gives us four victory points. And then if we look down here in South Asia, we do have a majority of the countries in South Asia. There's five countries, three of them are on our side. So we haven't got all of them. We can't put on a united front of South Asia, but we do have a majority, which gives us one victory point, which totals up our five. Now, I think if I press and hold tab, yeah, there we go. So we can see the Russians have got two victory points from the Warsaw Pact. So those, what, one, two, three, four, five countries over there in Eastern Europe, that gives them two. And then the Arab League, They've got themselves a majority in there. So there's quite a few countries in there. We've only got one country under our control in that area. So they've got a majority in there, but they don't have them all. So that's why they've got a majority. So they've got five as well. So that's why we've both got five victory points. We all want to get to 18. And now we have to work out exactly what we want to do. So this little sort of money thing in the corner, this is our action points. We have five action points per turn. And in the game, we will each have 50 turns unless somebody wins first or we nuke the planet and turn it into a great big desolate nuclear wasteland. So we want to make sure that we do the right thing. So we don't have that many turns. It's not like we have infinite turns. These things, you know, there's only five action points per go, per turn. And, you know, they, sometimes they don't work. So we have to be very careful with these things. So what can we do with them? You can go into places and let's say if it's on, on our side, we could do some diplomacy with Mexico to try and get them into the dark blue so we could put troops there. I don't think we need to do that. I don't think we need to do some diplomacy with them. What we need to do is we need to look at where we could get ourselves a little bit of a foothold into one of these. Now, I think the Arab League, that's going to be hard to crack. That is going to be very hard to break because the Russians, the Reds, have got all of that bar one. They've got, well, they've not got some, they've got one, two, three territories are empty, but they've got quite a lot of the territories in there. It's going to be really hard to break them. Sub-Saharan, however, could be worth a look at. Because that is very, very split. Nobody's got a majority. Nobody's got a united front. There's a lot of countries there that are not loyal to either side. Um, but what I think we might do is, let's go for South America. Let's try and get South America under our control, or at least get a majority. Now, how many countries are there in South America? Let's have a look. There's one, there's one, two. Does that count South America as well? Cuba does. And yeah, that, that's quite fiercely red, isn't it? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. And they've got one, two, three, four. They've got five. If we could take this, if we could take this place just here, what, what's this coming up as? If we could take Central America, that would be very good for us. That means we would have a majority over there. We wouldn't have a, wouldn't have a united front because obviously they've got the red countries there. But we would have ourselves a majority and we'd get ourselves three victory points, which would be very welcome indeed. That would take us up to eight. So what we've got to do is... We can go into here and we have ourselves three agents. Who are these guys here? Who are they like raccoons or something? I don't know. Look, look at you. What are you in Central America? Some sort of tiger? Oh, I don't know what that is. It looks very lovely. Also wearing a suit. Very good. Um, yeah, the little character pictures are very, very gorgeous to look at. So we need to get this place on our side. At the minute, it's not aligned to us or the Reds. It's just, it's just a neutral country. So we've got ourselves some agents and we have some military. So we've got seven military units we can deploy around the world, but we don't want to invade this place. I think we can do this in a nice, subtle sort of way. So what we're going to do is we're going to deploy an agent, but the opponents, the enemy, can hunt down our agents. We've only got three. That's it. If they kill them, they don't come back. We just have three agents to go around the world and cause all sorts of trouble, and that's it. But yeah, they can assassinate them. They can try and work out where they are, and one of their turns is to have a little pot shot at them. So the agents can work in neighbouring territories. So if we, say, put our person over in Mexico, if we landed our spy in Mexico, they could nip next door into Central America and cause some problems. Oh, look, it's like a little sort of cat. Hello, cat face. So I'm going to put our spy just here. 
So let's put a spy down just here. Also, oh no, it's counter spy. I pressed the wrong button. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to press deploy agents. Okay, that's two turns wasted, but never mind. <laughs> I meant to press deploy agents. It's all fine. It's fine. We'll land our agent just here. So we've got an agent there. Um, also, what happens is if you do play, try and place an agent in a country where there is an enemy agent, your agent dies because the enemy agent is well aware that your agent is going to turn up. Oh, I've wasted two of our points. There's me waffling about how important it is. Never mind. Never mind. And now we can go over here. And because they're next door, we can do all sorts of things. So what we want to do is we want to fund an insurgency because this place is not very stable. These dots in the middle of the countries depict how stable they are. So if we go over to just here, Sudan has got one dot. It's not very stable. Oh, however, the picture of the thing in Sudan, well, I don't know what, what you are, some sort of bird, obviously. That's very lovely. Um, Sudan, not stable. One dot of stability. That's not very good at all. However, if you look over, say, here in Saudi Arabia, really stable. Really, really, really stable. Not loyal to anybody, but a very stable country. So we want to make this place a bit more stable, and then we might be able to do something about it. So let's fund an insurgency, shall we? Let's let's be really nice and give the uh, some enemies in this place, some insurgents, a big load of weapons. So we've got ourselves a 50% chance of that succeeding. So it might work, it might not. And then the Russians have got a 40% chance of actually becoming aware of this. So let's just give it a go, shall we? So did it work? And I think it did. Uh, no, yeah, it did work. Yeah, so we're bringing it down. We're bringing it down. So we're, we're making them less stable so then we can do something about it. So let's try again and let's see if we can make them less stable again. So they're going to, oh no, I don't think it worked. No, that is a shame. Yeah, that's a shame. We didn't actually get to do that. Now, I would have done that again if I had not tried to counter spy in a place where there was clearly not a spy. But never mind. <laughs> never mind. That was unfortunate. So um, now it's handing over to the uh, Russians. It's the Russians go. They have deployed a spy somewhere. They're doing some diplomacy with Yugoslavia. They've deployed two spies. Okay. They've got two spies around the place somewhere. Okay, we're going to have to be wary of that. Okay, right. Now let's try and do another insurgency, I think. 60% chance of success. Give that a go. Did that work? No, it did not. This is unfortunate. This is unfortunate. Let's do it again. We now have a 70% chance of success. So is that going to bring that down to nothing? There we go. Right. This country is now absolutely lawless. All sorts of chaos is going on. People are rioting, running around the streets, waving their arms around, all that kind of carnage. So now we have a choice. We could either invade if we wanted to by chucking in some troops or we could try a military coup now we do have a little bit of a, a bit of a, a, a pros and cons of doing a military coup because it's next to cuba which is uh, owned by the reds we do get a minus 10 percent chance to succeed at the coup however because it's next to uh, next to mexico there we get a plus 10 percent so that kind of irons that out i don't think this country contributes who does that belong to oh, that is ours that is our country, but we just don't do anything. For some reason, it's not contributing to whether this place will succeed with a coup or not. No, never mind. That's absolutely fine. We have a 70% chance of a coup. It will use up our three remaining action points for this turn. There's a 50% chance the uh, Russians will be aware of it. However, if the coup goes wrong, and it's only a 70% chance, if it goes wrong, that place will become red which will be very inconvenient for us. But you know what? Sometimes I think you just got to go with it. You've got to roll with it. Let's see if it works. Let's try and go for a bit of a coup in Central America. Is it going to work? And yes, we have overthrown the old regime. Okay, wonderful. That's now ours. And because we now have a majority of the countries in South America, we get ourselves three more victory points. We have edged closer to victory. That is marvellous. We can't do anything else. So let's end our turn for now. Right, now this is where the escalation stuff starts kicking in. The Soviet Union has basically gone, oh, I'm not very happy that you uh, had some insurgents sort of uh, doing some stuff in Central America. That was a bit naughty. I can either tell them to clear off I can go, well, I justified that aid. It was absolutely required. Or I can terminate the aid. We will lose the loyalty of that place, I believe. And we will lose influence with West Germany. So this is where this starts sort of building up. This thing here is a nuclear death meter, if you like. And the higher that creeps, the, uh, the closer we are to killing everybody with big old nuclear bombs. So I'm going to justify this aid right now. 
I'm going to tell them to clear off. Right. And they've gone, nah, 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 nah. I'm not having that. I'm not having that. There we go. So now, if we terminate our aid at that place, we not only lose influence with West Germany, we also lose influence with Turkey and Venezuela. Or we can just say, go away. Escalating the situation with the Soviet Union will not affect any relationships with the countries at this point. I'm going to reject that evidence. Right. They've withdrawn. So at that point, now East Germany have fallen out with the Soviet Union a little bit. They've lost, sort of, oh, and Yugoslavia and Syria, in fact. So that's what happens. When you do challenges, you have to be really careful. You have to be really sure that you want to challenge because if you back down, you're going to uh, cause yourself to look a little bit weak to the world. So they've withdrawn that issue. Excellent. We get to keep this place. The Soviets have deployed another spy. Ah, now they're doing trade agreements as well. Oh, they're doing two trade agreements. That is unfortunate. We need to have a look at trade agreements. And they're chucking some cash over there in Vietnam. Okay, right. Now it's our turn. Okay, there's a world event for us to look at. So the tiger economies. Thailand, Vietnam and South Korea have invested significantly in the infrastructure needed to follow an export-driven economy. Their influence in the manufacturing sector is felt globally and both countries are demanding more materials. Both countries, all three countries, I would say. All three countries are demanding more materials than can be sourced locally. We could leverage our sizable economic network to support both nations with raw goods and expand our economic influence in the region as a consequence. So this is a little sort of challenge for us. If we can have influence over South Korea and Vietnam and Thailand and give them 60 of those things up here because there's resources which we'll look at in a bit. So I think that's 60 raw materials. We can fulfill this little sort of uh, demand and we get ourselves two free permanent victory points. However, we don't have influence over Vietnam or Thailand. I think they're very, very much um, toward the Russians. That's Vietnam. Oh, Thailand isn't actually anybody's. Thailand does not belong to anybody at all. We could try that. The only thing is we don't have the resources. Now, these, these things up here are resources. So we've got oil, food, raw goods, and I think like manufactured goods. And we generate those. We generate these and we can trade with people. Now, there is a demand thing somewhere. Demand. Is anybody demanding any goods? No, it doesn't look like they are. Nobody's demanding anything. I think the U the uh, USSR did just take a few of those. So maybe I missed the boat a little bit with that. But okay, never mind. Right, let's try and get on with some other stuff. We've got a few countries down here. Could we try and get this on our side, the rest of South America? Or do we want to try and go and grab these two countries here over in South Asia and make them a little bit more... Sort of, you know, a, a little bit more appreciative to our cause, shall we say. I think that might be a good idea. Let's try and come over here. So we could we could do some diplomacy in India. There's a 10% chance of that succeeding. That's not very good at all. We could fuel some protests, which would start bringing down their stability, which might be quite a good thing. We could also put an agent somewhere. How about we pop an agent just there... So fly an agent into Burma and then see what the agent can do next door. So we'll fly an agent into Burma. There we go. And now next door in India, we've probably got some more options. Now, yeah, we can try a coup if we like with a 0% chance of success. Yay. <laughs> I think that's a bad idea. I think that's a terrible idea. How about we fuel some protests in India just to bring the stability down a little bit? Did it work? Yes, it did. And now, because it's not fully stable, we can now do some insurgency stuff. The only thing is the Russians are probably going to work out that it's us. They're probably going to work that out. So do we want to carry on doing that? Or do we want to try and get Vietnam on our side? That might be quite a good thing as well. What part of the world is Vietnam? Is that in East Asia? Yes. Um, now, yeah, East Asia is quite big. It's a very big place because you sort of think, oh, yeah, it's, it's got China and Mongolia, but it also comes down to Australia and New Zealand is down there as well. I assume that's part of uh, no, New Zealand. Hang on. Can you click New Zealand? Yes, you can. What part of the world are you from, New Zealand? What part of the world are you from? Oh, you want some food? Alliance production. Oh, there, they're just making food. Oh, but look, it's a little kiwi, <laughs> a little tiny kiwi in a purple sort of dress thing. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. I like that a lot. That's very good. I didn't look at what India's was. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a beautiful thing to put. And it's wearing the proper stuff as well. That's great. So um, I don't really know what to do right now. I'm a bit unsure as to how to proceed. I think let's try and get India. Let's try and get India over to our side. And if they try and do stuff in India, 
because we've got our perk, there's a 30% chance that we will figure out that it's them and we can cause some trouble. So let's fund some insurgencies over in India. Did that work? No. Will this one work? 60% chance? That did work, I think. Yes. Okay, so they're becoming a little bit less stable. It's very good. Um, we can't do anything else. So let's end the turn, hand it over to the Russians. Right. The Soviet Union are invading Thailand. Right, okay. Okay, this is generally bad. So this is how this works. The Oh my goodness me, they're putting a lot of troops down. My goodness, they failed to sabotage production somewhere. Right, they've invaded. Do we want to respond to this? What was the world event? Was that Thailand? Um, uh, Thailand, yeah, it was. Do we want to... I think we might want to protest in a note. Let's see if we can get them to withdraw their troops. That'd be really useful. We're going to protest... And we're going to present the case to the United Nations. And now it's getting into the, the bit where I'm a bit scared. <laughs> because now we can either back down and they win, essentially, this little sort of this little uh, diplomatic spat. And we lose influence with Spain and Turkey. Now that's bad because that might cause our NATO United Front to collapse. Or we can threaten military intervention, which means that we lose the loyalty of Mexico. Now, Mexico are also giving us our South American majority. However, I want those guys out of that place. So let's threaten military... Oh, no. Right. It's all it's all gone all sorts of horribly wrong. The Soviet Union has gone to DEFCON 3. They are fueling ICBMs in preparation for war. I might have to do this. I might have to back down. I might have to back down. So we're going to lose influence with Spain, Turkey, Afghanistan and Italy. Yeah, this, this was a bad choice. I just thought they might back out, but I think maybe they're trying to get this Tiger Economist thing in. Um, okay, fine. I'm going to back down for now. I'm going to back down, and we've lost all sorts of stuff. Spain, Turkey. Uh, Turkey don't like us anymore. Mexico don't like us. We've only got two victory points from majority in NATO. That did not go well at all. <laughs> that was a disaster. Okay, so we need to get these guys back on board with us. Um do we do some diplomacy? We could do a trade agreement. They are demanding those and they provide food. Let's do that with you guys. We'll do a bit of that. That's quite nice. We've got a trade agreement going on. So we'll get some food out of them. We give them some of those goods. And now let's just do some of this stuff. Let's fuel some protests. We're going to break them down again. How infuriating. Oh no, that went all sorts of wrong. Or over here, look. <laughs> that didn't go well. However, Spain's character... Is a bull in a military uniform. That's very good. What's... I don't actually know what the UK one is. What's the UK one? Uh, it's a badger. Right. Okay. A badger. A badger in a purple suit. Lovely. What's Ireland's one out of your interest? It's a, a fox. A sneaky looking fox smoking a pipe. Right you are. I think what we're going to do is we're going to try and get Mexico back on our side. Just to make sure that we've at least got the majority thing there in South America because that's going to be really hard for us to get back now. NATO, that was a disastrous challenge of mine. That did not work well at all. And maybe I could have just escalated it, but if they didn't back down, we would have ended the game and nobody would have won. So that would have been a, you know, a terrible ending. It would have destroyed the world. So let's do this. Let's fuel some protests. So that brings it down from maximum stability. And then we can just fund some insurgencies like so. Um, ah, right. This thing happens sometimes, a brush fire conflict happens, where people in another part of the world get inspired by the insurgents in another bit of the world and decide to have a little bit of a rebellion themselves. And that just happened weirdly enough in Canada. So the people of Canada saw what was going on in Mexico and <laughs> rose up against their Canadian overlords. Right you are. And it didn't work in here either. So I think that took that down. Right, we'll do it again. We shall do another fund insurgency. Our last action point. And we're going to withdraw the agent because I think they might work out where we are. So let's fly the agent out. That's free. That doesn't cost any points. And now if we move time on, I wonder if they're going to try and take pot shots at us. Um, right, they're giving some money to Vietnam and they're making progress in the space race. Now, yes, we haven't even looked at the space race yet. We've not even looked at that. So if you don't want to do any of this stuff, you can always go back home and have a look at what's going on. So there is a space race button. You can invest in the space race. It costs one of your production things just there and one of your sort of action points. And um, yeah, we do this one first, an orbital satellite. For countries under the satellite orbit, rival clandestine activities are always detected and counter spy actions only cost one action point. It's very, very good. But of course, 
it, you only got five action points per turn and it takes up one of them. The USSR are ahead in that as well. Oh dear, it's not looking good. Right, we need to do some more of this. So let's go to here. We'll deploy our agent in this country. And because we're deploying it in a country that's loyal to us, it only costs one action point now. So we'll fly you in. We there we go. Also, I wouldn't mind trying to stabilize this place a little bit better. So if we chuck some foreign aid at them, that might bring their stability up to two, I would hope, 90% chance. There we go, marvelous. Right, now let's go back next door to Mexico. Let's fund an insurgency in Mexico. Yay, hopefully that will bring that down. So the coup chance comes up. Of course, we can't do a coup anymore because we haven't got enough action points. Fund the insurgency again. That didn't work. Right, last chance, 60% chance. It didn't work again, but we did cause a brush fire conflict over in Madagascar. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, maybe Pixar will cover that. Right, that's that sorted. The USSR signed a trade deal with Suriname. Is there anyone else demanding stuff? Ooh, yeah, they are down there. Okay, maybe next time we'll have a look at that. Right, they're doing a coup in Indonesia. Oh my goodness me, and it worked. They did a coup in Indonesia and it absolutely worked. You jammy swines. That's very fortunate. Right, they formed a defense pact with Mongolia. I don't really care. Yeah, okay, great. Put your troops in Mongolia. I'm not bothered. Right, do they still want some stuff? Yeah. They would like, they would like, oh, 33 units of raw materials. Yeah, there's no way we can provide that. We've got 10 currently. Does anybody else around the world want some stuff? Uh, no, it does not look like it. Okay. Let's go back over to Mexico. Let's see if we can get Mexico back on our side. Right, fund the insurgency. Fund the insurgency again. We don't have a lot of luck with this, do we? The random number gods are not with us today. Right, the coup, 60% chance of success. And if we fail, it goes over to the Reds. That's, that's not great odds, is it? Or we could try diplomacy. But diplomacy takes four goes. You have to do diplomacy four times. This bar fills up. Uh, to sort of quarter, half, three quarters, and then full. We could do that, but that can also fail. But it won't turn it over to the Reds. We have just bought that down. Do you know what? It's a 60% chance. Let's give it a go, shall we? Let's just try a coup in Mexico. I'm pressing the button and I'm hoping it works. Oh no, and... <sighs> Okay, fine. The old regime has been overthrown. We've got Mexico back. We've got our South American majority back. That's marvellous. Uh, what's going on over here? News, raw materials in Argentina, and yes, that trade deal thing. Lovely. Right, okay. Back to you, Russia. You've wasted money somewhere. Well done. And you failed to sabotage production somewhere. They've put some troops in Cuba. I'm not going to invade Cuba. Don't worry about it. I don't need to respond to that. It's fine. Their war is still going on there in Thailand. They're not having a great time over there. Um, yeah, I don't care. They can keep troops in, in that place. So the only thing that we use troops for, really, if we're not invading a country, the purpose of them putting troops down is so I can't go and invade that country myself. So I could, in theory, go and invade Cuba if I wanted to. But now they've got a troop there, I'm not permitted. That bans them from doing that. So it keeps that secure. Now, how can I get these guys back on board? I wouldn't mind these guys back on board. Try to get the Spanish and the Italians and that. Get NATO back in my favour because they don't like me anymore. <laughs> and that was a good source of my victory points. So yeah, currently the Russians are in the lead by one victory point. How has that happened? I've got the majority there. Ah, yes, the Arab League. They now have a majority. That is unfortunate. And they've got some from East Asia. Yeah, because I've got a majority over there. Okay, fine. That's something we'll just have to live with. We need to work on this and South America, I think. I think Peru might be a good target. Let's go and try and do some subterfuge in the land of Peru. So let's draw our guy out from here. We'll withdraw our agent from there. That's fine. Those two places look pretty good now. And let's drop our person over into Mexico. No, not Mexico. That's not Mexico. That's Brazil. <laughs> Mexico's up there. I oh, would look at you. You're some sort of... um. Tap tape here? Is that what that is? It looks a bit like what one of those I think they might look like. So let's deploy an agent over here. Now, yeah, previously I thought if it was dark blue, it cost us uh, one action point to deploy an agent. And if it was uh, any other colour, it cost us two. But no, I think it's just if they're loyal to us, it costs one. And if they're not loyal to us, it costs two. So if we try to land you in there, yeah, look, two action points rather than just the one. So let's land our guy over here in Brazil because that gives us a lot of neighbouring countries to go and sort of do stuff with. So we'll land you over there for an action point. Hello there. Hi, Brazil. Um, and let's try and work over here. Let's fuel some protests over in Peru. 
There you go. We've caused a little bit of trouble in Peru. And while we're here, let's cause some trouble in Suriname. Oh, they've got like a, a monkey. Is that a macaque monkey? I don't know. We'll fuel some protests over there as well, just to annoy them. So they're now not fully stable, which is good. Now down here, can we fund insurgencies in Argentina? That might be quite risky. That might be quite risky. Now, I know we're not going to get a full majority over here. I just want to make this a little bit more secure. I want my one or two more of those countries to be blue. Cuba is always going to be a problem. So we've got one action point left. What I think we're going to do is let's go and invest in this. Let's go and invest in the space race. So we'll get ourselves a bit of orbital satellite progress. So we spend one of those. Action point. Money goes in. We get 12% completed, which is no bad thing. Right. OK, Russia, over to you guys. Ah, now, they are trying to assassinate our people. They're trying to find spies in Mexico and Cuba. So they're trying to work out where our person is. Oh, now our, our dude is there. Our, our agent is in that country that's been completely destabilised. The Soviet Union has invaded the sovereign nation of Brazil. I would rather, I think I should protest that because they've just, <laughs> just started invading. Uh, yeah, I think they should possibly clear off. So we're going to escalate it to the United Nations. Losing influence with Australia is not too bad if we back down. But I think they will back down. I think they'll back down. Yeah, I think they'll back down still. I'm going to press threaten military intervention. And they've backed down. Marvellous. OK, so they've cleared off. Good. Um, although we did still lose some influence with Australia because they didn't like the fact that we were threatening to use, you know, war and fighting and killing and stuff. Um, and that place has become very loyal to us now, which is great. OK. Oh, that's good. Well, let's chuck some foreign aid their way. And that will boost up their stability a bit. That's marvellous. OK, well, now let's do some of this. Let's maybe get Peru on board. So 50% chance of that succeeding. Did it succeed? No. 60% chance of it succeeding. Give them more guns. Give bigger guns. More guns. Um, OK, 50% chance of success. Keep giving them more guns. And the last one. Yeah, let's do that as well. Let's fund this last insurgency. And uh, it didn't work. That's unfortunate. Never mind, never mind. Right, Russia, over to you. Let's see what's going on. Trade agreements. A violent coup in Thailand has resulted in a pro-Soviet Union government. That is unfortunate. Um, do you know what? I don't think it's worth protesting it. We'll ignore that. It's fine. You, you can have that place for now. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Right, insurgencies. Insurgencies. Come on, take this out. And marvellous. Right, if we do a coup... We have a 70% chance of success. But if not, it goes fully red, which could be very bad. We've done okay so far. I think we risk it. Let's just press the button and see what happens. There we go. Bish, bash, bosh. And it's gone blue. Marvellous. Okay. So now we very much have the majority down there. We've very much got the majority. Hang on. How many countries are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And they've only got three. No, four. They've got four countries. So they've got, uh, what, four to our seven. So, yeah, do we want to get one more? Do we want to get one more country? Do you know what I might do, actually, with our last bit? Let's give Peru some foreign aid just to try and increase their stability. You are most generous. Yes, I am. Uh, uh, I don't know what. Are you a llama of some sort? Or an alpaca or something like that? But yes, okay, I am most generous, aren't I, Mr. Not-Quite-Identified Creature? OK, the Russians aren't happy that we have uh, supported the coup over in Peru. The Peru coup. The coup of Peru. Um, I'm going to tell them to clear off. Clear off and I shall support the capitalists. Hooray for capitalists. Oh, no. Now all this nonsense is going to happen. Right. This is it. I am going to escalate this further. I'm going to ready my nukes. We are certain to lose the loyalty of the Gulf states. I don't think that's too much of a bother for us right now. Let's press that, see if they back down. They are not backing down. They're not backing down. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We have gone to ridiculous levels. Oh, and this is going to go horribly wrong. Showing weakness in front of the Soviet Union now will only bolster communist momentum and cause you to lose influence with South Korea who are very loyal to us, Brazil, who we've only just got, Australia and Botswana would lose, and New Zealand. Or we could threaten the big red button. We could do that. If we escalate the situation with that further, yeah, what do we do now? What do we do now? I don't want to launch nukes. We're going to have to back down. I'm going to have to do this. And that means we lose that, which means we lost all the effort we just did because they didn't back down and we didn't back down. Or do we just threaten to press the button and then they see if they back down? I don't know. I don't know what happens now, but they're fueling nuclear bombs in preparation for war. 
Oh, they don't back down very easily, do they, the, the USSR? They love a bit of the old fighting. They love a bit of the potential for war. Um, I don't want to press the big launch button. What happens if we press that? Do we actually launch or do we do, do we like threaten launching and then they might back down? Cuba believes the Soviet Union is escalating global tension needlessly. And ah, that's interesting, though, because Cuba has actually lost a bit of... Uh, they've lost a bit of loyalty with Cuba of the Soviet Union. Okay, that's interesting. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm too chicken. I'm too chicken. We're going to lose influence with lots of places. Australia and Botswana, I'm not bothered about. South Korea, Brazil and New Zealand will go a little bit less blue. Uh, so we've lost Australia. That's absolutely fine. However, they're now invading South Korea, which is very unfortunate. That's not good, is it? That's not good. Oh, no! They've killed our spy. They've killed our spy. They somehow worked out that the spy was in there. That's that's a bit of a fluke. Uh, they've invaded the sovereign nation of South Korea. Yeah, I'd like to complain about that. I'd like to complain about that, thanks. Oh, here we go again. Right, I'm just going to present it. I'm threatening military. Right, okay, good. They've cleared off and left us alone. Oh, dear, but that did us some damage. That did us a bit of damage. So, uh, yeah, they've gone back to fully... Ah, oh, that didn't work at all well, did it? <laughs> that was a big old disaster. Oh, dearie me. Okay, it's all gone a little bit kind of wobbly at the minute, hasn't it? I mean, neither of us are doing very well indeed. We just both keep escalating tensions and making everyone very, very cross with us around the world. So um, what I have noticed is South Asia is now ripe for the pick. And we can have some stuff over here because they're both now not loyal to anybody. India and whatever's next door, Burma, are both neutral countries. These are the ones that are not overly loyal. I wouldn't mind Afghanistan having some more having some more stability there, but we can't do much about that right now. So over here in India, what can we do here? Can we fund some insurgencies? Why is everything greyed out? What's going on there? Should that be all greyed out? Sabotage in India now. Hang on, what? Why can I need sabotage them? I've got an agent next door. Why can't I do the full range of things? There we go, that's better. So um, I think we could fund some insurgencies, make this place very unstable. Let's see if we can destabilize India. That did not work at all. And then try again. That didn't work at all either. This is not going according to plan, game. Can we please have a little bit of the rub of the green with these random chances? Right, fund the insurgency again. No. Oh my goodness me. We're really not having any luck with that, are we? And and it get one out of five worked on 60% and 50% chances. That's a little bit harsh, isn't it? Oh my goodness me. Okay, well, fine. There we go. We'll have to sort of try again next time. Right, they're invading South Korea again. They're invading it again. Stop invading South Korea. I'm going to protest in a diplomatic note. I'm going to present it to the UN. I'm going to threaten military. And they back down again. Now, Mongolia and Indonesia believe that they're weak. Okay, so I mean, the Soviet Union are losing influence all over the place now. Right, India. Funded insurgency. Come on, this must work. 70%. Yay! Right, okay, good. And now the coup. We've got a chance. We get boosted by the two neighbours. They give those plus 20%. Unfortunately, the uh, Chinese up there give minus 10%. Let's go for it. Although, to be fair, given our look on getting those insurgents in, that did not work very well. So this might go horribly wrong. But okay, let's do a coup. And uh, there you go. <laughs> It went horribly wrong. Oh, marvellous. Yay. <laughs> that did not go according to plan because now that place is, is controlled by the USSR. Brilliant. Okay, well, well done us. However, this place here, Burma, is now blue, which is good. It's very fiercely blue. Let's chuck some money their way to make them a bit more stable. And that is our turn done. Also, let's get our agent out of there now. There's no point having our agent there. There we go. And the good thing about that is we get a victory point because we now have the majority again over there. We've got the majority, which is nice. Although India, the biggest country, is uh, is a little... Is a, yeah, it's a little bit of a shame. 70% chance. But yeah, really, we struggled there. The random number gods were not with us when we were trying to get that place. It just, uh, it just didn't work, really, did it? But never mind, we had a go. A coup has failed in Burma. Did they just try and take Burma? Is that what they just did? A coup is just failed in Burma. Did th are they trying to take us? That means that one of their agents must be around there somewhere. Now, this is pure guesswork. This is absolute guesswork. We have no idea where the agent could be. I don't think they're in Burma itself because our agent was only just there. So I guess they're in a neighbouring place. I, they, are they in China? Let's do some counter spying in China with a panda wearing, gla <laughs> wearing glasses. That's brilliant. Let's counter spy. Let's see if their spy is there. No. 
That is unfortunate. Do you know what? Let's have another counter spying effort, shall we? Because they're doing a coup, they must be next door to Burma somewhere. They've got to be. So let's counter spy over in Vietnam. Let's see if they're in Vietnam. Are we going to kill their agent? Uh, yes. Beautiful. Pow pow. Agent assassinated. Okay, marvellous. Okay, that went well. That's good. We are down to two agents. They are down to two agents. They don't come back. The agents never, ever return. So that's a good thing. So yeah, we're sort of equal agents now. I've got one point left. You know what? Let's chuck it into the space race. Let's have a little bit of space race fun. There we go. So we're 21%, 42%. The Russians are a little bit further ahead than I would like, but never mind. Um, food aid urgently needed in Namibia. Okay, if the uh, USSR don't uh, meet that requirement, I might well go and see if I can help out there. Um, oh, Cuba. They're invading Cuba. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't care about Thailand. Ignore that. Cuba, I would like to protest about that and present it and threaten. And oh, here we go. <laughs> I thought they'd back down by now. I'm going to ready the nukes. Yay. Right. Okay. Okay. They back down. Poland, Yemen, Peru, Argentina, Suriname. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ah, this is quite... I'm a bit nervous. I'm I'm all, a, I'm all a, a jitter. Okay, what can we do? Right, who's got demands for things? Oh, lots of places. Oh, they're all demanding stuff. Right, what do you need? 34 units of raw materials. Yeah, we've only got 24. I'll give you 24. They need 33. Um, Just... What's down here? Are you Suriname? No, you're Namibia. You require 46 units of food. We've not quite got that. What do you need? 49 units of manufactured goods. Not quite got that. Or 43 units of manufactured goods. Okay, we've not quite got enough materials to go and help people out just yet. We're just shy, really. We need another, what, sort of uh, four or five turns to get all those materials in place. And then we could go and help people out. And that's very good for loyalty. Whilst we're on the topic of trade, we only make plus one of those raw materials. That's not very good. We get plus one from Canada, I think. is that That's what the map is telling me just there. So Canada generate our only source of raw materials across the world. So what we need to do is we could possibly need to uh, find somebody who we could do a bit of a trade with. And you down here, Zaire, can we do a trade deal with you? Because you supply this. So trade demands. You need food and you provide that. But I don't think we can actually... Can we get you on board? Who do you who do you belong to? Oh, you are ours. You're blue. Why can't I do a trade deal with you? Do you need to be more stable? Let's chuck some money your way, Zaire. You're most generous. Lovely. Um, okay. That didn't seem to help. I wanted to do a trade deal with you, but maybe I can't... I don't know why I can't do a trade deal with them. I've got no idea. I'm not sure. What I might do is I might shore up what we've already got. I might just go and chuck some foreign aid around. So Mexico, have a bit of foreign aid. Hopefully it works. It's not enough. Well, you swines. Um, you, place just here, Venezuela. You have some money. It's not enough. Brilliant. I'm glad the random number gods are with me once again. That's two 75% chances that have failed. Brazil, would you like some foreign aid? Uh, it's not enough. My goodness me. Wow. Okay, three 75% chances that have failed. Well, let's do a fourth one, shall we, and see if that works. You are most generous. Well, there we go. <laughs> well, the odds of that must have been very, very minimal indeed. Okay, fine. Let's end the turn. Let's see what they get up to. They're stationing troops in North Korea. That's fine. Oh, do you know what I do need to do? I need to go and look at what they've got in North Korea. Oh, there's also a coup going on over there. Um, no, you can have troops in North Korea. That's fine. Um... Do we care about that? No, I'm not going to escalate tensions about that over there. That's absolutely fine. Um, North Korea. Who have you got representing North Korea? <laughs> so, like a warthog with glasses in a suit. Okay. I mean, it could have been worse, couldn't it? It could have been a lot worse. Right. Marvellous. So now we need to do something. We need to actually start making moves because I, I wanted to sort of bolster, their, um, bolster them up a bit, but it just didn't work. How about Cuba? Could we do a coup in Cuba? <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant that is brilliant whoever decided that this was the cuban mascot is that's exceptionally good i don't know what the bird is but i like the outfit that's very very good um let's station an agent um if we station them there does that count as a neighboring place like i don't know how that counts as a neighbor i mean does he can we de can we deploy an agent here no we can't um okay how does that count as a neighbor i'm going to assume that we can put a spy just here, if we deploy an agent, 
just here. So fly an agent into Central America. Yay. I assume that's adjacent. I'm hoping it is. Yeah, there we go. So we could do a coup. 70% chance of success because we've got so many blue neighbours around the place. Let's try a coup. Although, to be fair, we've not had any luck with any of these random chances so far. So we've got a 70% chance. Let's... We'll fund an insurgency first just to see if we can bring that stability down which I don't think it worked. And we have caused a bit of a conflict somewhere else in the world over in that part. Is that Vietnam over there? Did it work? No, it didn't. Wow, we really are not having the best of times with random numbers. Okay, we'll have another go. 60% chance. Right, that's brought that down. So does that bring the coup chance up? Oh, I don't know now because we haven't got enough action points to do a coup. Um, right, we'll fund the insurgency again. Let's see if we can make that. Oh my goodness me. Okay, fine. Let's try and get... Mexico a bit more on board. Give you some foreign aid. 75% chance. You're most generous. Hooray! Something worked. A violent coup in Burma has resulted in a pro-Soviet Union government. We were in Burma. That must have been an absolutely astronomically low chance of, a, of success, given that it was mostly under our control. Oh my goodness me. Do you know what? I'm going to have to protest. We were in there. That's our place. So, okay, so nothing happening much at the minute. We've just sort of said, oi, that's not very nice. Uh, we'll present it. We'll threaten military. We'll ready the nukes. And they've backed down. <gasps> yes. Okay, right. We have, however, lost... Uh, yeah, Brazil believes that we're escalating global tension needlessly. But they have lost an awful lot of stuff. But so have we. Oh, look at Europe. <laughs> Europe doesn't like us much anymore. We were good friends with Europe at one point. Now four of the countries are entirely neutral to us. Brazil isn't too bothered. Oh, dear. Okay, right. Let's try and get Cuba on our side. 85% chance of a coup in Cuba. It's got to go blue. Marvellous. Okay, Cuba is ours. Um, let's now possibly fly over to here. Put an agent over here. So let's deploy an agent to Venezuela, which is nice. And then we can go over here. We can start funding some insurgency in Brazil to see if we can get them on our side as well. I'm determined to get South America under my control. And again, it didn't work. Well, quel surprise. And unsurprisingly, the Soviet Union are a little bit miffed that we've gone and taken Cuba. Because, you know, I think they got on quite well. We're going to justify that aid. And we're going to support the capitalists. Right, so Indonesia has fallen out of the Soviet Union. However, we are going to lose the loyalty of Mexico if we ready our nukes. But I think that's what we need to do. Let's ready the nuke. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm going to press the button. I'm going to press the button. I think they will back down. We're going to lose the... I can't read what that says underneath there. I can't read what it says. Um, view. I can't see what that says. Yeah, so uh, West, uh, West Germany. It must mean West Germany. Okay, so emerging crisis. So this could end the game. If he doesn't back down, if Mr. Bear doesn't back down, and I'm not backing down, we will end the world, and the game will end, and nobody will win. But I think he'll back down. If I press that button, I think he's going to back down. But yeah, we're going to lose the influence of West Germany. We're going to lose the influence of quite a lot of people. Ah, oh, dearie me. So yeah, we'll lose NATO support completely. Mexico already hates us. This place, which we've taken ages to get, also doesn't like us. Ah, oh, it's... Do you know what? Escalation really does absolutely hammer you. I mean, look, hardly anywhere around the world supports us at all. We're like, this is the worst Cold War ever. Everyone's fallen out with both the major powers. <laughs> okay. Do you know what? I'm going to press the button. I'm going to press the button and see what happens. We might nuke each other, in which case, on turn 15, I have ended the world. Let's see what happens. Are the Russians going to back down, or are we going to kill each other? And I've pressed the button, and we've killed each other. <laughs> okay. I have destroyed the world. Hooray! Nuclear war has broken out between the two superpowers. Nobody survives the radiation and global cooling of nuclear winter. Your legacy is irrelevant. Everything is lost. Failure. Oh, well done there, Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear and Mr. Eagle, you have contributed to the demise of the world. Bravo. Well, there we go. That was a look at Precipice. And probably, I would say, that's a look at how not to play Precipice, because I don't think I did very well there at all. That was, that was probably a terrible, terrible showing. And really, the thing I've learned from that is that escalation 
is probably a bad thing. If you don't need to escalate it, then don't escalate the problems because they very rapidly rise into the case of this person has fallen out with you, this person has lost loyalty with you and all that kind of stuff. And even if, you know, when you start reading your weapons, even if your cause is just, some countries don't like the fact that you're going, well, I'm going to launch missiles in your face. And uh, yeah, they then lose loyalty with you, even though you are, you know, in your mind doing the right thing. So um, yeah, that's, that's probably the lesson I would take from that. Don't escalate things unless you absolutely have to. And the other lesson is uh, nuclear bombs kill everybody, so don't nuke the planet. That's also an important lesson, everybody. But there we go. <laughs> so that was Precipice. I enjoyed that, even though I was actually probably quite terrible and I probably was not playing it in the most optimal way, which is a great surprise, let's be honest. I actually enjoyed that quite a lot. And um, I think it's it's quite tactical. You have to play it a little bit to get used to it, I think. I imagine as you play, you're going to pick up on little sort of nuances and things. But yeah, I like a turn-based. I like a turn-based game. Turn-based games are always good. So you can, you, know, you can sit back and have a think about what you want to do rather than rushing about and stuff. It's got a good you know, premise behind it. The two powers themselves can't actually fight directly. At no point do you actually sort of uh, wage war between the US and the USSR because that just doesn't happen. That didn't happen in the Cold War. That's the whole point. And um, and I like the the sort of visuals on it. I like the sort of the animal avatars of all the different countries and things. I, mean, I don't know why. I don't know why this is all represented. Apparently, I think this is Gaddafi, by the way. I think this is Colonel Gaddafi in Libya in 1969, represented by a hyena, I believe I read somewhere. So, so there we go. That's a fun thing. I don't know why they're all animals, but I like the fact that they are. But there we go. I think that's a perfect point to stop because the world has been annihilated and there's nobody left on it. So uh, yeah, we've stopped because we're all nuclear dust, which is lovely. If you did enjoy this, if you enjoyed this look at how I managed to nuke the planet and destroy every living thing on it, then please do leave a like. That would be splendid. And also please do subscribe if you are not already, just to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs and gubbins and nonsense that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. This room was fire free until it wasn't. Okay, yeah, come with me if you want to live, Paul. Hop on. Wee. <laughs> this is brilliant. That looks fun. Do some watery stuff. Yes, make the propane caster not explode. Uh, yeah, the toilet's on fire. Never mind. Oh dear, that didn't go according to plan. Never mind, it's fine. <laughs>